Kia ora, in today's headlines, Israelis and Palestinians are celebrating a lull in the week-long Gaza conflict. A ceasefire was declared this morning following eight days of missile volleys and one day of negotiations involving Palestinian officials Hillary Clinton and Mohamed Morsi in Egypt, which is being hailed as a new stabilising power for the region. The ceasefire calls on Israel to facilitate the entry of goods into Gaza and Hamas has warned Israel against violating the deal while declaring the militants will continue to arm themselves. Israeli government spokesman Mark Regev says they just wanted Hamas to stop launching rockets into Israel. Our goal is to bring peace and quiet to the people of southern Israel who've been on the receiving ends of these rockets from Hamas-controlled Gaza for just too long. To Myanmar, there have been several significant moments for our country's leader today. Earlier today, John Key visited the graves of eight New Zealand soldiers who were killed in Myanmar during World War II. And he becomes the first New Zealand Prime Minister to visit at the capital, Naypyidaw. Mr Key is there for talks with President Thane Sein and is offering help with agriculture. And they're largely importing their agricultural products, particularly um, milk powder and the likes from New Zealand. So we're going to be announcing an aid project uh, for them. We'll be essentially developing a farm for them over the course of the next five years. While Mr Key noted the mineral rich country is impoverished in areas such as farming, Racial harmony has also been in short supply this year. Religious violence in the western state of Rakhine has led many Buddhists and Muslims to question whether they can coexist. In local news, Civil Defence has cancelled its national advisory relating to yesterday's eruption at Tongariro's Timari crater. GNS Science says the threat has now passed, but warns there is still a significant probability of a sudden eruption within the next week. Meanwhile, the Department of Conservation says groups heading to Tongariro National Park should continue with their plans. Spokesman Brent Guy says they just need to use alternative tracks as the Tongariro crossing is closed. No way they'll be doing that trip except from Whakapapa village across to Waihohonu or the desert roadside and we recommend that. And the department has improved safety on Raoul Island where one of its volunteers went missing in January and is presumed drowned. Doc has paid $60,000 in compensation to Mihai Mankis Nagay's family. A spokesman says they have also implemented significant safety improvements, including the cessation of water testing at Fishing Rock. The Earthquake Recovery Minister predicts the next step for the Christchurch Town Hall is council discussions. Councillors have unanimously voted to repair the building in full accordance with the new code, but Jerry Brownlee suggests it not, it's not case closed. Surprised. I, I understood the building was very badly damaged. They may have more up-to-date information. We'll just have to talk to them about that. And the Christchurch residents are questioning the timing of a pay rise for the Earthquake Commission's CEO. Ian Simpson has been given a $70,000 pay rise this past year, putting his salary in the $400,000 range. Concerns Leanne Curtis says that won't sit well with struggling Cantabrians. There's an awful lot of people doing it hard as a result of either delays or confusion with their EQC claim. Police have arrested two men they believe are linchpins in the supply and distribution of methamphetamine in Southland. During raids in Hamilton and Auckland, police seized meth manufacturing equipment, cannabis and $4,000 in cash. They believe the lab produced methamphetamine with a street value of between $150,000 and $200,000 being sold in Invercargill. Pike River families are angry that the company's former directors are challenging the inquiry's findings that they put production ahead of safety. Bernie Monk says having refused to speak up during the inquiry, it seems like the directors are now trying to shirk responsibility. They're going to be passing the buck all the way through. We'll have to inform the families. It's going to be upsetting for them. Someone's got to be accountable for what's been done here. And the buck stops at the top. There's been a 15% decrease in fatal and serious crashes on state highways in the past five years. The Transport Authority says the high-risk proportion of the network has nearly halved to 4%. The NZTA report found that state highways account for over half of road deaths. And finally, British super spy 007 may have a license to kill and drive fast cars, but in America, it's a different story. The latest James Bond, British actor Daniel Craig, has so far been without a license to drive in New York. He has just passed a road test to secure his license. No word if it wasn't Aston Martin. Kanu ina karere maatua maite fare korero o rima, mauri ora.